Now we're going to talk about average velocity. And we're going to talk about it uh, just in, uh, during an interval delta of t. We have to, you'll see why, but it depends on an interval. Delta t, and just like displacements in position, delta t just means some final time tf minus some initial time ti. Okay? So let's just go for it here and define it. So what we're going to do, average velocity, we have our cursive v. Um, we put average as a subscript when we mean the average velocity. And it's equal to the displacement delta x over that time interval delta t. So if we go back to example two, and we have Hal here, and Hal is not rolling, he's just sliding along. We can think about this time and this time, and plot or calculate how far did it go, the displacement along the axis delta x over the time. If we wanted to write it out a little more gory, we could even say it's x final position minus x initial position over t final position minus t initial position. Right? That's what delta x and delta t are. Or if you want to think about it sort of in words, you could say it's the displacement past xi. It's really how far you go past the initial position over the time after ti. Instead of thinking of it as an absolute final in, uh, position in time, you can think of it as a continuous one if you wanted. Right? Some, some, time pa some position past xi, some time past ti. But one thing we've got to keep in mind is, even though we're doing 1d, it is a vector. Even in 1d. We have to think of it as a vector. So if it's a vector, I put my vector symbol on it. And if this is a vector, somehow it has to become a vector. Oh, that's because displacement is a vector. Right? And here, what do I do here? Before we put an i hat, but here, let me blow your mind a little bit. Position is a vector. What? Position was just where it is. Position is the displacement from the origin. Right? So position is always where you are relative to some origin. You can draw a displacement vector. So positions are actually vectors as well. They're just vectors where xi is always, the origin is always 0. So that's actually what can make it a vector as well. Displacement is a vector. OK, so now we're OK with the vector world here. Now let's look at our example of motion. This is still example 2. OK, and here we are. We have plus t. We have plus x. and we had some offset or something, but basically, for uniform motion, we know it's going to be a line. So if we wanted to think about what does this v average look like on a graph like this, we need a time interval. We need ti and tf. So we don't really even care about the origin at this point. Let's just pick ti and let's just pick tf. And it cares about the values of the position when those happen. So what you can do is you can just draw a little thing up here like this and a little thing up here like this, and say, where was it at ti? It was at xi. And where was it at tf? It was at xf. So there, what you can see is that, kind of like we said before, v average um, is the slope of that line. Right? Because v average is delta x over delta t, that's rise over run, like you've learned to calculate um, in algebra, right? So it's the slope. It equals rise over run. It equals delta x, in this case, over delta t. Okay? But now, let's look at another example of motion. So you could say all it is is ever rise over run. It's over the slope. How does this ever get complicated? So here is a way it can get a little bit complicated. What we're going to do is a second example. Let me go ahead and start drawing it here. I don't have a lot of room. T, x, another x, t plot. And we're going to have Hal uh, go for a while, sort of this fast, and then speed up, and then stop. All right, so let's do that one more time. Slow Hal here, speeds up, and then stops. So we have two different velocities going. Right, so we could plot it kind of like this. You can start, don't even have to start at the origin. It goes at one velocity, one slope. And then it goes at a higher velocity, higher slope. 
like that. I'm going to be wishing I'd made that first one a little steeper. Let me draw that again. So goes one and then another one like that. Okay, so what we want to do now is say, what is V average for this motion? And we could define, actually, let's define three times. There's really three important times here. There's T1, there's T2, and there is T3. Right? So there is no one average velocity for this motion. It really, average velocity always just depends on two points in time. And you can see now um, that things are changing. Okay? So V average, let's see, I'll put a notation like this from 1 to 3. Right? So the average velocity for the whole trip. It's easy to get. All you do is literally, you just read things off the graph. You say, here, at time 3 it was at x3. At time 1, it was at x1. It's just x3 minus x1 over t3 minus t1. Where everything, these are all vectors, right? Keep our vector notation going. So literally, you just follow this formula. But what's interesting about average velocity is here you'll get a number, and the thing never went at that velocity, right? So how went some slow value of, of the slope here, or some slow velocity here, some high velocity here, and the average is somewhere in the middle. Right? So it never actually went the average velocity, even though it had an average velocity. Okay? But here's the other weird thing, is the average velocity is not the average of these two velocities. Right? So we could call this v average uh, 1, 2 would be this slope, and we could call this v average 1, 3 would be that slope. But it's not necessarily the slope of the two velocities in this example. So don't let that name make you think it's an average of a bunch of numbers. It really isn't. It's just simply the final and the initial for any interval. We could calculate it from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. Okay? So don't let the word average trip you up. Oh, we have a question. Okay, let me see what our first question of the class is here. Um, Andrea Plan B, why isn't time a vector? Oh, yeah. Oh, I see. I get, yeah. So here I drew uh, this displacement, right? And I said delta x is a vector because it's a change in position. Well, why not delta t? They look exactly the same. It's t final minus t initial. So there's probably lots of really deep answers to that. But let me just give you the simple answer that sort of matters for this class. It sort of gets into why are we treating a 1D as a vector. It's always going to have a positive value or a negative value. You can just add them. There's really no need to treat it as a vector, even though the positive means one way, the negative means another way. When the vector notation becomes very powerful is when we're in 2D. Then when you add two things as a vector in 2D, the vector notation becomes very critical. If you just add two vectors in different directions, they don't just add. They have to add as vectors. Okay? So really, the simple reason is there's only one dimension of time, so it's not necessary. If we had two dimensions of time, then yeah, we'd probably have to have some weird vector time. But since we, in our simple universe, only have one time, to, time dimension, then we never bother to treat it as a vector. But interesting question. <laughs>